look at how many people survived day one. I am impressed. Everybody having a ball? Yeah. Awesome. All right. I first want to thank, have everyone take just a moment to thank Sean and Missy for putting on such a great show. This is my 11th year here. It just gets better and better and better. Let's put your hands together for Missy. I don't know, where's Sean? There's Missy. There's Sean in the back. Big round of applause for Sean. Big round of applause for Missy. What a vision they had to bring this industry to a much higher level of professionalism and just amazing things that have happened because of this conference in the, in the internet marketing space and everywhere else. So just a huge, huge congrats to Sean and Missy. All right, got a few announcements before we get on to our keynote. Um, there is Wi-Fi available in here and the idea is Affiliate Summit and uh, the code there is ASW14 Wi-Fi, all in caps. Um, if you're on Twitter, you can follow Affiliate Summit on Twitter, either at, at Affiliate Summit or use the hashtag ASW14. I know I've been seeing lots of good social media interaction on Twitter and Facebook, people meeting up for uh, dinner, drinks, and uh, getting a little business done here and there as well. All right, so we're having a great time here in Vegas, but Affiliate Summit is going back east for Affiliate Summit East 2014. It'll be held at the New York Marriott Marquis at Times Square, August 10th through 12th, 2014. Registration is open now, so get in early to make sure you can make it to the conference. As you know, Affiliate Summit has sold out every single event they've ever put on, so don't wait until the last minute. If you have an Android or iPhone, which really, come on, who has anything else but one of those anymore? We have an app for Affiliate Summit. Please download that. You can keep track of all your schedule, agenda, meetings, and everything else. Tonight, who's ready for some more partying tonight? Let's hear it. Yeah. All right. Uh, tonight, we've got several great things going on, but the one we really want to highlight is the Affiliate Ball. It starts at 10 p.m. It will end at 1 a.m., and it's right over here at the Chateau Nightclub. That's the same place we had the uh, share sale party last night, and uh, we'd love to have you come and join us. It's always a great time, loud, fun, and uh, an absolute ball, which is why they call it the Affiliate Ball. All right, we had over 5,400 attendees for this year's Affiliate Summit West. Let's put your hands together for yourselves for being one of those 5,400. Awesome. That's a record attendance, I believe. And uh, again, this conference just keeps getting better and better and bigger and bigger. And we'd like to thank you all for being part of it. All right, now we're going to talk a little bit about our keynote. That's why you're all here, to hear Mr. Steve Denton. I'm going to introduce him now. So Steve Denton is the Vice President of Marketing Solutions for eBay Enterprise. He's been involved in the affiliate space since the year 2000, and he brings a really interesting perspective to the affiliate marketing space and to his message today because he has run two of the largest affiliate marketing networks in the business, and that's Linkshare and Pepperjam. And additionally, as VP of eBay Enterprise, Steve has visibility of the entire marketing process all the way from advertisement all the way through the shopping cart with eBay and he's going to be sharing some of that insight with you today. Now on a personal note, Steve is a coin collector and a NASCAR fan. So if you enjoy his presentation, feel free to throw some Jeff Gordon silver dollars his way. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Steve Denton. Thanks, Marty. Thank you. Good morning. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to set my timer so that I have 45 minutes so I can get you out of here on timing and get you to lunch. Sound good? So, it, yeah, yeah, thanks. So, it's great to be here today. I really am excited to be here. Nervous, very nervous. Um, you know, I've, I've been in this industry a long time and um, we'll talk a little bit about that. But when Sean and Missy approached me and said, hey, Steve, we'd like you to come keynote the Affiliate Summit. I was like, well, what, 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 what would I be able to talk to these folks about? What could, I, what could I talk to this audience about that they would find valuable? I mean, you've had such great speakers here. I don't, you know, I don't have any inspirational stories to tell you, right? I, I haven't achieved, like, I didn't, like, walk on at Notre Dame. Um, <laughs> I, am, I am not a U.S. senator, nor was I the mayor of Newark. Um, but what can I talk to you about? I've been in this industry a long time, and I was excited to come talk to you about it. And they're like, well, come on back, Steve. It'll be like homecoming. It'll be like homecoming. Well, I go back to my homecoming at college, and you know what I realize when I go back to homecoming? I'm old, and I don't know anybody anymore. <laughs> right? 
It used to be, I went to the very first Affiliate Summit in 2003. I'll never forget. I was running LinkShare at the time. We had had our symposium that summer, and Missy and Sean came to me that summer, and I think we're in June in Chelsea Pier, and they said, Steve, we want to do a show. And I'm like, you want to do a show or do you want to do a boat cruise? I'm like, no, we want to do a show. We want to elevate this industry. We want to do a show. Would you endorse it? And I said, I think that's a good thing. And I remember in 2003 in November, we were at Baruch College. And there was 200 of us. 200 of us at Baruch College. And we're like jammed in classrooms. And just look how far this industry's come. And look how, how much valuable and how, how much it's grown. So I want to talk to you a little bit about today. Because I think what I've seen and what I want to talk to you about today is despite over a decade of exceeding and outpacing the growth of e-commerce, despite every year something's going to kill this industry, but yet, it overcomes and survives it. It's where the innovation comes in this, in this industry. Despite all of that, I think it's very misunderstood. And we're going we're gonna to level set a couple things today. Okay? So before I get started, just by a show of hands, I was actually surprised this many people came in to hear what I had to say. Who's in here just to check email? <laughs> That's okay. I'll just make sure I don't, I don't make eye, eye contact with you. So let's go ahead and get started. So, when I go see presentations, and I go to these keynotes, this is pretty much what's on top of mind for me. Hey, who the hell are you? Okay. Okay, Steve, why should I care about what it is you're going to talk about? That's interesting. Tell me something I don't know. And if that's interesting enough, what can I do about that? Does that sound like a fair use of our time together? I'll tell you a little bit about some things that maybe you should care about and give you some action items at the end. So a little bit about me. I hail from the great state of West Virginia. Woo! West Virginia. There's five of us that got out, right? <laughs> when you come from West Virginia, your whole goal in life is to get out. Because that's the only way that you're going to be able to get married and not be married to a relative, right? <laughs> it's a fact. I can say that I'm from West Virginia. If I wasn't, it would be offensive. My father was in the military, did two tours in Vietnam. We traveled around quite a bit. I grew up in a military family, moved around, got a chance to see a lot of the globe, always moving from place to place, got to meet a lot of great people. Came back to my home state of West Virginia and got my undergraduate work at a little small college called Shepherd College, which is now a university. Did my graduate work at Duquesne, which is a Catholic school in Pittsburgh. And I came out of school and I went right into the consumer products industry and I went to work for a company called Pepsi-Cola. And that's what the logo looked like when I started at Pepsi-Cola. In fact, when I started at Pepsi-Cola, you could actually smoke in meetings. You could smoke. My boss was a guy named Jimmy Riddick, and he had a big oversized ashtray next to his desk. And he would continue, and he smoked Carlton's. I think Jimmy's dead. But, um, <laughs> but man, he could smoke some cigarettes at work, right? The good old days. I left Pepsi after five years, and I went to work for FedEx. I started out as a sales rep, and I became a sales rep, and I went through, and I moved up through the sales ranks, and I, and I became the managing director, or director of sales for the Northeast. So I managed FedEx sales force in the Northeast. I'm on a plane. I met a young lady by the name of Heidi Messer. She tells me about a company her and her brother starting called LinkShare. She tells me about this crazy idea about a, a commission-based sales force on the web. Now, you got to remember the times. This is 1999. Right? You were doing portal deals. You were in a chat room on AOL pretending to be somebody else. <laughs> you had a Commodore computer, or if you were really cool, maybe you had an Apple C2 Plus or something like that. Right? You did business with people like Prodigy. So she told me about this, and I went to work for a company called LinkShare, and I thought it was an amazing model. Advertising that works online. Get paid when you drive results. So I got an opportunity, I went to work for LinkShare. I started there in 2000, we sold the business to Rakuten in 2005, and I stuck around until 2008 as the president. I retired in 2008, and I took some time off. When you retire and, and you're 40 years old, there's a couple things I'll tell you. One, your friends aren't retired. <laughs> your friends are working. I would call my friends, hey, what are you doing? Working. So you can't go fishing today? No. You can't go golf today? No. Working. The guys that aren't working are 70. That's who you hang out with. <laughs> and you become irrelevant. 
So a guy named Michael Rubin, who started a company called GSI, was, uh, had asked me to come and he said, would you come and start up a media business for us? So we went there and we started up GSI Media and I had the privilege of getting involved with Pepper Jam, which was an affiliate network, was relatively new in the, in, the, in, the, in the time. So we got that and then we sold GSI to eBay. We are now eBay Enterprise. I run, I'll talk to you a little bit about what I run, but we're eBay Enterprise and, 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 and that's a little bit about my career. So that's kind of, I guess that's my, my Pinterest page. That's a little bit about me. A couple things you might not know about me. I live in the great state of New Jersey. Yes, ma'am. Snooky. I, people say, do you know Snooky? I do not. <laughs> yes, I was impacted by Superstorm Standy, but we are fine. As Marty told you, I am a huge NASCAR fan. I will pay to watch anybody race. I, if, if two grasshoppers are racing, I'll watch it. I mean, I love a good race. And I believe with all certainty that a good Halloween costume must have a mullet and a mustache. <laughs> and if you don't have a mullet and a mustache in your Halloween costume, you probably don't have a Halloween costume. So this is Keith Stone. If you're familiar with the Keystone beer commercials, Mr. Keith Stone, that was my uh, costume uh, this past year. So a couple things about me. My kids said I should tell you a little bit about me. They said, people, people don't like you, Dad. You, you, you don't tell good jokes. My young son said, if you could say the word poop, people like that, that's funny. People will laugh. I'll tell him that he was right. And my daughter said, Steve, uh, she said, Dad, just talk about monkeys. Monkeys and poop. I didn't know how I could work it into the keynote, but I did. So people ask me all the time, they said, Steve, what's eBay Enterprise, and where does it fit in eBay, and... And are you eBay Marketplace? So I thought I'd tell you a little bit and show you, like, this is how we're set up as an ecosystem, right? So we've got really three main businesses over at eBay Inc. We've got eBay, which is what you will all mostly know as eBay Marketplace, right? And we've got some fine folks here from the eBay Partner Network uh, this week. Uh, that's what a lot of people know as eBay. And then we've got PayPal, our payments business. And then eBay Enterprise sits in the middle. And that's where we host the cart for about 100 merchants. We got all of our marketing services, and we're building out one common platform to get a unified uh, view of the customer. So drill that down, eBay Enterprise is the former GSI. So eBay Enterprise is really made up of three businesses. We got commerce technology, which hosts carts. So we host the carts for folks like Toys R Us, Dick's Sporting Goods, folks like that. We do the call centers. We do the shipping and logistics and the fulfillment. And then we got omni-channel operations, which is the payments and the ability to do cross-docking, and then we have marketing solutions. And under marketing solutions, that's what I run. So marketing solutions is a collection of all the ad tech, the demand gen and the CRM, the agency, the creative, the usability, the affiliate network, the email platform, anything that's actually gonna drive demand to a cart or drive demand to a client. So that's the business that I run. Um, we've got about nine different companies there that we integrated back in July. We've got 2,200 global clients. We do a ton of great work for our clients, and I think I've got an interesting lens to share with you today. And there's your, your, your obligatory logo slide. So we work with some of the best brands on the planet, and, uh, and that's a little bit about us. So let's move into the content. So I want to share some data with you today. I think I can share data with you that you have not seen before. Because who else has that lens, right? Who else looks at the demand gen, the customer relationship management, and at the same time sees checkout on the cart. So let's level set a couple of the rules around the data. One, we're in a quiet period. We haven't released Q4 results yet at eBay, so I can't tell you about the holiday. I can't talk to you about how we did, right? So, and no specific merchants. So what we've done is I've aggregated 30 of our major e-commerce brands into a data set. We took a look at Q3, so we're looking at over $50 million of affiliate online demand for Q3 2013. Um, we backed it up with our attribution product, and uh, all the partners are partners that we work with either on our cart or through our affiliate network. So that's the data. Okay, Steve, so you sound like you're reasonably well-versed in this space, got an okay background, been around a while. So tell me why I should care. One, this market is big and growing. A decade of outpacing the growth of e-commerce. I know two things that I don't have to fact check right now. One, the next big thing in e-commerce, whatever that is, and if I knew I would invest in it, the next big thing in e-commerce is working today as an affiliate. I guarantee it. I don't know what it is. I don't know what they're doing. Like I said, if I did, I'd be on their board and I'd venture my money into that. 
But what other industry can you work in where you get to test your business model, work with quality advertisers, prove the value of your traffic, and generate a return? I love this business. And guess what? Everybody else loves it too. It's big and growing, right? Forrester Research studies $4.4 billion market by 2016. Big and growing versus small and shrinking, right? Small and shrinking only is really good, I guess, when you're talking about what? Waistlines and prison terms, right? Big and growing. So let's break it out. Let's take a look. So the first thing we did, and we'll level set it, we'll dig into the data here. We broke the publishers into business models, right? Like how are you driving traffic? How are you converting? And certainly you could do this and you could break it out into 50 different things. So we tried to aggregate it to make it consumable. So we said loyalty and rewards, coupon, and then the rest, right? Mobile merging technology, social, comparison shopping, niche content. You won't see search on there because most affiliates use some sort of search activity to drive demand. So if we look at the demand generation across the affiliate business model for, for Q3, 42% coming from loyalty and reward sites, 51% coming from coupon sites, and then the remaining 7% coming from different types of technology. So that's the demand. The story's a little different when you take a look at traffic. So you can see that that 7% on, on the demand is driving a significant more amount of traffic. So that would lead you to believe that maybe there's a conversion challenge there or some things that you could dig into. And certainly from a loyalty and reward standpoint, if you remember it was 41 or 42% of the demand, it's 25% of the traffic. So you've got great conversion going on there, right? So it's working, it's working. I hate when they build in like those funny things in my prezos. Like, what happened to the good old days, right? We just pop, everything comes up. And then let's take a look at how affiliate stacks up. So let's take a look at AOV, and conversion rate. So taking a look at the cart, if you look, if you index the AOV of affiliate transactions versus total site for Q3, the AOV, uh, the affiliate transactions were 1% higher for Q3 in 2012 and certainly grew and were 4% higher versus the cart in Q3 of 2013. So the AOV is higher when an affiliate is involved and the conversion rate is higher much higher, right? Last click, it's much higher. You can see against the site, 84% better on affiliate traffic for Q3 2012, and then 90% uh, for Q3 2013. So that's great. And merchants are spending more. Volume's up, average commission rates are up 11% year over year, and flat media buys are up 71%. It's a pretty good story, right? Imagine that's why you're here, big and growing, right? Great demand, great traffic, better AOV metrics, better conversion metrics, and merchants and advertisers are paying for it. It's awesome. But despite all that, biggest challenge that I've seen in this industry for the past decade is despite a decade of proven success and metrics like that, merchants and affiliates continue to struggle to understand each other, continue to struggle to understand the value prop and how to make that fit into the strategic initiatives of both parties. And I'm not the only one who says that, right? I mean, if you look at the research, right, they surveyed worldwide companies about their ability to evaluate channels and ROI. And we took other performance-based channels, paid search, email, affiliate. And you can see on the affiliate side, right? I mean, higher, say it's poor, I can't evaluate it. What can't you evaluate? It's okay or good, it's a challenge. The other challenge is when I go talk to clients and we meet with clients across our ecosystem, you know, clients are always gonna ask about clicks and conversion, right? So there's Dana. She's an affiliate channel customer. That's my wife's name. So I've worked her into the pre-zone now. So I've talked about both my kids and my wife. Check the box. <laughs> Take home some swag and meet Hulk Hogan, and it's been a big success, right? I mean, these questions are getting more and more complicated. 
because companies are struggling to measure the affiliate channel ROI, and these questions are getting more and more complicated. Who's, I'm sure you've all heard these. Whether you're a merchant, or you're an affiliate, or you're a network, you got to, is Dana a new customer? What's the incrementality of that? Was the affiliate top or bottom funnel? Does she always use affiliate links? Did she come to my site, find me, and leave and just check out with a coupon? Are she always buying the lowest margin product? How latent was that order? And most importantly, how do I pay for more of these Danas? I never asked that, though. Yeah, that's my wife. One's enough. Right? She's expensive. She's so good looking, though, she could be my second wife. And that's a compliment. My wife, I met my wife in college when I was just a small town kid. She stuck with me. And now she's living the good life. <laughs> What'd you do today? Took some pictures, went to the gym. Excellent. <laughs> What'd you do today, Steve? I answered all these questions. So, but how do I do that? How do I pay for more Danas? And how do I align that with my corporate strategy? So, okay, Steve, I'm tracking with you. Seem like you know a little bit about the space. And you show me why I should care. Now tell me something I don't know. Now I'm hoping I've showed you something you didn't know already. Because I showed you some cart data. But let's peel it back a little bit further. Let's dig into that cart. Tell me something I don't know. So to get that, let's take a look at the purchase path. Because I think the whole piece of evaluating the value of any channel is you got to take a look at that purchase path. So this is a typical purchase path, right? The introducer. So we use words like introducer, influencer, closer. Some people talk about top of funnel, mid funnel, lower funnel. But just for the purposes of our conversation today, let's talk about introducer, influencer, closer. So it wouldn't be uncommon for an introducer to be an email. Right, I went to your site, maybe I didn't buy anything, but I'm interested in learning more about the products that you have, or tell me when you got a deal going on, or let me know when something's happening. So you send me an email. Great introducer. Right, then typically I might, wanna, I might go through my purchase path or my customer decision journey, and I might see an affiliate link, I might see an impression link. If I went to your site, a display, I'm probably gonna get a retargeting image served to me. Right, maybe I still don't buy. And then ultimately, I might, do a pay, I might do a search on Google or Bing and convert. Right? That's a pretty typical purchase path. Average purchase path has about seven different um, interactions before a close. It's pretty typical. Right? And then you've got what we call a one step, right? So where the affiliate or the media is the introducer, the influencer, and the closer. All happens within the session. So since we've set that as the context, let's peel it back. So first thing I'll share with you is affiliates start transactions. For those of you who believe affiliates are sitting at the end of the value chain, waiting for a conversion to happen, I will tell you today you are wrong. If you're an affiliate and you think of yourself in that way, you are wrong. If you are a merchant and you think of yourself that way, or you think of the channel that way, you're wrong. It's just not true. Data doesn't bear it out. Data doesn't show that. Data clearly shows what's going on. So here's what we did. We broke, we used the same models, same breakdown on affiliates. So let me walk you through this. And there's a lot of heavy data here. Um, so let's spend a little time on that. So one step, right? So you look at the affiliate model, and these are transactions that got closed where an affiliate was in the purchase path. And you take a look at that. And one step is right around 12% there. And that's the orange. So hey, guess what? I introduced you to that. I influenced it, you click through my link, and you closed within that session, one step. And then you move out, I'm the introducer. So I introduced you to it, but you didn't close in that session, right? So over 20% of the affiliate impressions on deals that close, the affiliate was first touch. I'm the introducer. I, I, I made you aware of it. And then you move into the influencers, right? And a lot of this is just the work, candidly, that you don't get paid for. Right? You're not. You're not getting paid for that work. I'm not saying it's good or bad. It's just that's the reality of what's happening today. Right? It's baked into the value model. Right? There's an ex expectation that that's happening. 
You're not getting paid. It's influence. So that's the gray. And then closer, last click, that's where you get closed. That's where the deal gets closed. So I'm going to leave it up there let you take a look at it. It's interesting data. Take a look at your business model if you're an affiliate. Um, on the merchant side, when you look at the merchant side data, um, it's, it, it bears out to be uh, relatively similar as far as percentages go. So you start transactions. You're just not sitting at the end, hanging out, cherry picking, right? So look at that. I mean, mobile and emerging technology, it's insane what's going on. The other thing that I found to be really interesting looking at this data, laser pointer, too far. Okay, social. Look at the amount of percentage of closing on social. Certainly something you got to pay attention to. Affiliates drive new customers. Are these just the same old customers that I get all the time? No. In fact, 49% of them are new. So let's define new. For the purposes of this study, new, you didn't buy online from that merchant in the last 12 months. So maybe you were an old customer that got reactivated or you're new to file. But if you look at the business models and you look at over the third, we looked over the third quarter, nearly half the customers who closed through an affiliate link where an affiliate was involved, over 49% were new. So you're driving new customers. The channel's driving new customers. It's introducing customers and it's closing new customers. And then if you take a look at that niche, remember I showed you guys that 7%, right? We got out the 7% that was driving about 22% of the traffic. Over 70% of the customers that convert through those models are new or they haven't bought in the last year. And that's online. Now, maybe they're buying in store, maybe they're buying through the catalog, right? That data just doesn't bear it out. But for the purposes of our conversation today, online transactions, which would include mobile and tablet. Show of hands, does that number shock anybody? No? I'm the only one? Hey, Steve, you're the only one with the data, and you're the only one who's surprised by it. <laughs> and not only do you close new customers, but you add value there. Because another 3% of the customers that you touch are new, right? So you get, you, you're driving 49% that you close or you're involved in the click path are new. There's another 3% that you're involved in the click path, not recognized, that are new to file as well. And the customers that repeat through the channel are valuable. In fact, customers, the AOV for repeat customers that come through the affiliate channel is 7% higher than that of someone who is new. So we've got your transactions that come through that are new and your transactions that come through that are repeat. And certainly loyalty and rewards is driving a lot of this, right? It makes sense, right? It makes all the sense in the world that you'd be able to see that. But do or repeat, it doesn't matter. Affiliate touch points add value, right? Because if you just look at the transactions that take place on the cart, the AOV that has no affiliate click or no affiliate activity in the purchase path versus transactions where affiliates are involved in the purchase path except for apparel, accessories, and footwear, the AOV is higher. So if the affiliate's involved, if the customer engages an affiliate through their customer decision journey, the AOV is higher. So it's valuable. And lastly, latency windows. How long does it take for these deals to close? Well, 73% of these conversions occur within 30 minutes of the click happens in the session. Another, you know, you take a look there, 83% of all conversions happen within 24 hours, and then you can see the rest. So what have we learned? Well, hopefully we learned a couple of things, right? One, affiliates introduce a ton of new customers. Two, 
Affiliates not only uh, drive new customers, they influence new customers. Three, the AOV is higher when an affiliate is involved. The conversions are better, the AOV is higher. So I think that says a lot about the consumer shopping behavior and where the affiliate sits in the value chain. But you can't talk about the affiliate industry. You can't talk about this business and not have a conversation around coupons. It's 51% of the demand from Q3. Who's going to talk? If you're going to talk about this business and not talk about coupons, then you're not in this business. I mean, you have to. And if you're going to talk about coupons, you better talk about mobile. Because if you're not talking about mobile, I mean, you know, look, actually, this is a great time to check my time and have a visual. Awesome. This is the battleground. Right? We all would agree this is the battleground. Right? This is the battleground for the next five years. Right? There's more power in this than the computing power that sent Apollo 11 to the moon. Right? 1961, John F. Kennedy's at Rice University. He says we're going to send a man to the moon and bring him back safely by the end of the decade. They probably could have got the get him to the moon part by 64. It was the bringing him back safely part that took a lot of time to plan out. Right? More power in that phone than was in Apollo 11 computing power. And we use it to post pictures of our cats. <laughs> I don't have a cat. So you've got to talk about mobile. You've got to talk about So let's dig into this real quick. So nearly 100 million Americans use digital coupons, right? Number of users couponing with mobile devices are going to increase 20% in 2014 even after bigger growth in 2013. The other night, I was, I, I, I was at Target. Um, and uh, uh, I don't know why we were in Target, but I had both my kids with me. They must have needed something. For those of you who have teenagers, they inform you on Sunday nights things like, I don't have socks. What do you mean you don't have socks? Did you have socks on Friday? Yes. Where are your socks now? Well, they don't fit anymore. I got a science project due Monday morning, Dad. I need some of those letters to put on a poster board. It's 9 o'clock at night, Maddie. We're off to Target. So we're at Target, and, and the girl in front of me is checking out, and you know, she pulls her mobile up, and she's looking for a coupon on betting and shows it to the guy, and boom, knocks it out. I mean, mobile couponing is, 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 is growing rapidly. I mean, you can't ignore it, right? And you just take a look at the time. Look at 2010, right? Look at the billions of minutes that consumers are spending on mobile coupon sites, right? Half a billion, this is say February 2010, that's almost a little over half a billion. And then desktop, you know, maybe about 100 million minutes. And then look at where this thing was February 2013. Billions of minutes consumers are spending on smartphones on coupon sites. 2.9, let's just round that up, I would for quota purposes. Three billion minutes, it's insane. And then you look at the tablet and the desktop. And all that time is driving all kinds of sales. Right? 2012 mobile coupon value, gross merchandise sales, 5.4 billion, projected to be $43 billion market in 2016. Big and growing versus small and shrinking. But I will tell you, in my opinion, this is the biggest threat to this industry. Because as big as that is, the competition is great. And the devices are becoming complicated, right? Just take a look at usage. It takes many forms. I mean, look at this grocery survey, right? Among mobile grocery users, 25% are printing it and putting it, uh, printing it and bringing it into the store. You know, another 12% are saving it to email. 11% save it as an image, right? Save it in a mobile wallet, 9%. My wife, we don't use coupons. Okay. It's complicated. And it's crowded. Complicated and crowded. That's tough, right? Do a search for coupons on your phone. And the customer behavior is changing rapidly. Look at this study. Right? What I read, 75% of all folks with a smartphone 
look at their mobile within 15 minutes of waking up. Now, frankly, I do it right away because it's called my alarm clock. But I don't know that that counts, right? But if you look at this study, it's fascinating, right? Desktop rules the day. Tablet rules the night. And mobile is the gap in the connector throughout the day. So your customers are multi-device, and they're using it in multi-ways on multi-platforms. And this journey is complicated. 79% of all purchases made on a traditional device. 40% of customers switch between device types to browse for the same item. And 53% of consumers use their smartphone at home to browse. So the journey is multi-device, it's crowded, it's complicated, and, and it's hard to target. And finally, it's global. If you're just thinking about this for US only, you're missing out, right? Coupons, just not a US thing. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna read the stats to you, because I yell at people when they read presentations to me. I'm like, I can read, thank you. Just email me the deck. So it's 51% of our business, it's complicated. And the merchants, right, with beacon technology, personalization, in-store, there's a lot to pay attention to. Okay, Steve, you got my attention. Seem like you know what you're talking about, kinda. Right, why should I care? Tell me something I don't know. Now what do I do about that? Thanks for the knowledge, man. What do I do with that? So, five things. One, you gotta optimize for mobile. If you don't start design with mobile in mind, you, you're done. You have got to optimize for mobile. And if you look at the top 10 loyalty reward sites, I would say to you four of them are optimized for mobile in Q3. Coupon sites are doing better, but you know, gotta optimize for mobile. And that's a two-way street. If the publisher's optimized for mobile, the advertiser needs to be optimized for mobile because there is nothing worse than driving someone from a mobile experience to a poor customer experience on, on a poor advertising or a poor mobile site on the retailer site. Optimize for mobile. Two, harness omni-channel, right? It's commerce. Take the E out of it. It's commerce, not e-commerce. It's commerce. It happens everywhere. Think about the way you behave, the way you interact. It's commerce. Leverage harness omni-channel. Coupons, this is a simple one, right? Leveraging coupons that you can redeem in-store or online or on your mobile. We've got plenty of merchants, and I'm not up here doing a commercial for what we have. I try to be very cognizant of that today. No commercial from Steve today, right? I'm not gonna jam the eBay story down your throat. But you have got to get plugged into this. Right? Because still 90% of all transactions are taking place in store. Broaden it out. Right? Online to offline, affiliate driven sales. Just within our own clients, we drove $12 million in transactions in Q3. And that's not even in the holiday season. If you're a retailer or you're a merchant, your store associates are probably a good source for you to share and promote deals whether your store associates or maybe your Facebook friends or your networks out there, but you can recruit them and use the same technology that you use today to promote affiliate. Why wouldn't you leverage your store associates? I, I go to Dick's Sporting Goods all the time. I'm a big, I like to play golf. And, I, and, and, and the guy at Dick's like sends, he, he gives me this card. Hey man, friends and family. It's friends and family. Anybody get those postcards? Do you have any friends that talk like that? Or just mine? <laughs> Hey man, I work at Banana Republic. Here's my friends and family. And once you come in, 20% off this weekend. How archaic is that? How about you just send me the thing electronically and have your customer, your associate ID baked into that, and we can track that and I can redeem that online, in store, on my mobile. It exists today. You should be taking advantage of it and leverage it. Recruit, share, redeem, reward, track your partners. Track your store associates. We set them up. Track your Facebook fans, friends. You know, set up your resellers, leverage your technology. And you gotta enable multi-action commissioning. 
just can't be living on this last click, you know, I'm gonna pay you X for a sale. That's great, awesome. That's been awesome for a long time. But you know what, let's start driving some other behavior. Let's align it with our corporate strategy, right? Maybe instead of paying, you know, 5% on a $100 purchase, we structure a little bit differently. I'm not advocating lower commissions, right? So I don't, I don't want you to walk out, oh, Steve said lower commissions, no. But let's drive the right strategy. What is it that we can drive as a partner, as an affiliate, and what does the retailer need? So maybe it's a 4% on 100 bucks and then pay them a dollar kicker on a new commission, or we do something on a mobile site, or we do it on device, or we leverage folks that came to the site, looked at a product. You know what always strikes me as odd? I've come to your site, I've looked at your product, you can retarget me, why do you serve me a static image when I go to an affiliate site? Why is that not a smart image? Why is that image not reflective of my activity? Because it would convert better, right? Why are we not doing that? Some are. Configure modular commissioning. SKUs, categories, that's table stakes. New to file, device type, order value, in-store versus online, categories. You know, lots of ways you can commission against that. But I'll leave you with this. There's five things I want you to take away from our time together today. Well, hopefully a little bit more. But there's five things. One, the affiliate channel is more robust and more valuable than you think or most people give it credit for. Nearly 50% of all customers that are converting coming through an affiliate channel are new. If the affiliate involved in the click path, the AOV is higher. 12% of the time, affiliates are one-step closers. I said hello, I influenced it, and I closed it. Mobile coupons are going to be a $46 billion business in 2016. You need to optimize and get ready for that. Optimize for mobile, optimize for omni-channel. And then for anyone, would integrate my corporate strategy into what I need my affiliate channel to do. It doesn't make any sense to not have them integrated. So, am I right on time? Thank you, all right. So, that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Valuing affiliates, whether you establish and own your value as an affiliate, we're thinking about it from a merchant standpoint. It's a great industry, I love it. I couldn't have been more excited to come talk to you guys today, and I couldn't be more excited about the future of this industry and the work that's getting done. It's a wonderful business, it's a wonderful, wonderful industry. I've been in it a long time, and I keep coming back. And it's not because I don't have other things to do. I just love it. I love it, man. I love it. So, congratulations on all your success. Congratulations, Sean and Missy, on having such a great show. And uh, um, I've run out of time. I prepared it that way, not to take questions, because I figured you asked me something I don't know, and I'd look stupid. But um, so I just prepared a content. And besides, I'm between you and lunch. So Marty's going to come up and, and, and give you a couple things. But really, I, I hope you learned something today. I really appreciate your time. And thanks so much, and enjoy the rest of your day. I don't know about you guys, mind blown, huh? Let's hear it for Mr. Steve Denton. Wow, a lot of information there. Steve will be hanging out uh, right down here near the front, so if you have some questions for him or you'd like to just thank him for such an amazing presentation, please feel free to come up, shake his hand, maybe take a picture with him. And uh, other than that, go out, have a great bunch of sessions today, do some great networking, do some good business. I'm Marty Fonke, your MC for the for the conference, and I thank you all for coming. Bye bye.